Let us turn to page 6, the fourth day of the Novena to the Divine Mercy, page number 6. And uh, the intention from our Lord was to pray for, for those who do not believe in God and those who do not yet know Jesus. Let us read together. Today, bring to me those who do not believe in God and those who do not yet know me. I was thinking also then during my bitter passion and their future zeal comforted my heart in the emotion of my mercy. Who are those who do not believe in God and those who do not know Jesus? Um, today I went to uh, St. Mary Seminary after 25 years uh, I entered that seminary, our seminary here, to study theology after <coughs> 25 years. Came back. We have the cardinal and so many priests there. As we had the, uh, two, three months ago, we had the convocation of all the priests, hundreds of priests. And there's a study in uh, Rice University from sociologists and psych uh, psychologists, anthropologists, regarding the development of uh, the country, you know, the U.S. of A, and uh, in general, and the prototype of how this country would have developed depends on how Houston is developing. We are uh, we are ahead of the United States of America in the development of you know, the country. So the whole country is following the footsteps of Houston, Texas. You know that. What is going on is this. The demographic of people coming into the area in Texas, especially Houston and all the uh, the counties, Harris County, Fort Bend County, is this, that the immigrants they came here like the refugees and those immigrants they're coming here and they have children and their children are growing now they are you know they're born here so like in the the old days after World War Two we have an influx of uh, a lot of European, or Eastern European coming here. But in the 80s, okay, a lot of people from Asia coming in. And Latin, Latinos countries, I'm not talking about Hispanic, because Latinos mean they're Brazilians and you know, Portuguese, also Latinos, come here. And these people, this generation, they're not of Western or Eastern European country anymore, and they're growing. So the number of, uh, and especially, and then also the, the black, not just Afro-American, but Nigerian and all those from Africa coming here, more and more. So the number of, uh, uh, the word is Anglo-American, that in fact, there's no such thing as pure Anglo-American, because a lot came from maybe Czech, Poland, German, you know, Germany, and all those countries, where we just group them into Anglo-American, in fact, not. Yet. So what happened is, is the, the influx of uh, people coming in, and so Forreston is going down, okay, going down, 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 downhill, up to now, to, to uh, 2016, and Roman Catholics going up in number in Houston. And we have been, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, the century, Catholics, the Roman Catholic churches so, were supposed to be rejected. And, and you know the history of the Catholic Church in America. But there is a group called the Nun, N-O-N-E. They don't believe in anything anymore. They're growing, 6% are growing. What is going on? It's, it's about believing in God, okay, believing in God. But this group of people, they have, whether you believe in God or not, doesn't matter. God is not, the common ground for us to unite anymore in this country. Now, when the immigrants coming from uh, coming from European countries, when we say the word God, immediately you know Jesus Christ. Okay, right? The meaning means Jesus Christ, whether you're Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox. Okay, and even the Jews, oh, they know the God of Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob, the same God. But now a lot of people coming from the Middle East. Uh, Islam, Muslim, 
they don't have the same meaning the word God Jesus Christ or Hindu or Buddhist or Taoist or those people from Asia so the word God is not like we understand understanding right now or about 30 years before so when Jesus said today bring to me those who do not believe in God see the word God is a source of division and terrorism right now and that's that is why there's a group of people they don't want to have anything to do with God so the problem for our our archdiocese right now is how to bring people together how do we understand God now I speak the same language with you because I speak English but doesn't mean that we have the same meaning understand the same thing when I say the word God okay and I have the word God in English but in my mind I'm thinking of the sky because the very first word we learn in Vietnamese is trời or thin which means the sky whenever I look at the sky I think right away God God and the sky okay heaven and God means one thing and it's impossible for a Vietnamese to deny God to be atheist because the very first word you learn is heaven and heaven means God and you look at the sky and deny deny God impossible in the culture but in this culture it can huh? we can deny because we see a lot of those conflicts and divisions and contentions and war so the question is is how do we bring all these people from different tradition together together because and uh, uh, we tend because we have so many cultures multicultural and especially in this Houston area and so that means each culture would have a different understanding of what God is and how are we going to come together and you're gonna tell me your meaning but is it the same God are we worshiping and then Hispanic and we uh, Hispanic have is the very special unique spirituality and a northern uh, European uh, you know spirituality and then Eastern European spirituality southern European spirituality and then Asian all kind of spirituality how are we going to bring everybody together it is a challenge right now for us okay. no longer the same so I was uh, talking to many priests and I share well many culture we think of God with the heart and other cultures think of God with the mind the truth some love some mind and there's a complex and if we come everybody just come together and say this is we how we think about God it's gonna be chaotic and it's complex but the one thing that we know this culture so many cultures how are we gonna be Catholic okay? how are we going to be Catholics and this is what Jesus want us to pray for bring to me those who do not believe in God we have to have only one culture the Catholic culture is the gospel culture the gospel culture and this is what I have been preaching and promoting all every single day as I'm, I've been here you can be you have the, your 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 ancestors are from Poland and you're from Italy and I don't know where were you from uh, some Texas, you Texas. <laughs> you're from the Republic of Texas. Okay, Texas. Are you sure? Yeah. So from the Mexican side or from the American side? Because this this state or this country, Texas, uh, came from both. Huh? So you know, so you come together and you talk about this culture, the gospel culture. From the gospel, we have our real, true gospel, visible gospel, is Jesus Christ Himself. He is the gospel. And from him we know our God. So we have gospel culture and we have Jesus culture. This is what brings us and binds us together as Catholic. But now, how do you see Jesus? You have the Protestant, you have the Christian, so many denominations. Everybody says, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jesus. But very different, very different notion of Jesus. Isn't it? And, and we have the situation now, uh, before, I, I spoke with some priests um, this afternoon before when when a Catholic a young man or woman marries to a non-Catholic okay 
That means immediately we, this is still my culture, okay? The children have to be baptized Catholic. Do we still have it? Do we still have it here? And they have to sign that if you want to get married to Catholics, okay? Mm -hmm. Your children, when you, you give birth to children, they have to be baptized Catholic. But now look at the, the culture right now. Your children or your grandchildren, doesn't matter wherever you're baptized. Okay? Now suppose you, you have your children. I have my children getting married to Muslims. Impossible. They will, you know, uh, or Jews or other religions, they will refuse to get the, let their children baptized Catholic. So how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to have this one scene, Catholic culture? First, the gospel. Second, the gospel, the real gospel is Jesus Christ. And in a concrete term, the real presence of this culture is the Eucharistic culture. Only in the Eucharist. You can speak many languages, but in the Eucharist, you come together, we come together. This silence, adoration, we are one. Holy Eucharist. Protestants do not have this, okay? Oh, you have the Bible, but everybody explains the Bible their own way, isn't it? But here, you come here. It is Jesus Christ. We start from the Holy Eucharist, and we go to the Scripture, and the Holy Eucharist, Jesus Christ, really here, and He teaches us what, how to read the Gospel, how to read the Bible, and how to worship God directly from Him. And the question I've heard again and again, Many of us, many of us, in this is not just in Sacred Heart Richmond alone, but many churches, like uh, so many priests in the seminary, uh, keep you know, reflecting this problem. A lot of Catholics go, you know, go, going to church, but they are so devout in coming to meetings and meeting and meetings. But when it comes to Eucharistic adoration, you don't see them. They're more devout to meetings more than the Mass and more than the Eucharist. And when we speak together, we don't have the same culture because we do not worship the same God. Maybe we, when we are worshiping Arise, the movement, we're worshiping X movement or Cosio or maybe a spiritual exercise and we're worshiping some kind of God. That movement becomes our God. Even the church, people worship the church. No, that is wrong. We're asking ourselves the question, this is from other priests. They say they, they are so devout to meetings, but they don't worship Jesus right there, right here. And is it true? And oh, something, oh, something like uh, rings true here. It, does it happen? Does it happen here? Is it true or not? Yes, yes. What is going on? You understand? Does it make sense? You understand what I'm talking about? We are worshiping the ministry. But the ministry, is, the word ministry comes from the word ministero, means serving. What are we serving? Are we serving our own organization, our own ministry, or are we serving Him here? And why we, we focus so much on the meeting, but when we oh, come to worship Jesus here on, on, on Wednesday, we, we don't come as group, I suppose. Like a group. Come worship Jesus, and each group. Come worship Jesus, not yourself, not the group, not the ministry, but Jesus Christ, and then we'll share the same Catholic culture, Eucharistic culture, Jesus culture, Gospel culture. We're talking about those who don't believe in God because they cannot believe in God because the Catholic do not have, worship the same God, the same meaning of God. Here, come here and worship Him. Now, and those who do not know, yet know Jesus, how many of us truly know Jesus? I keep using that word, three words, right? Are we just a fan of Jesus? I know about the Lord. I know about, oh, Sacred Heart, you can introduce me, okay, Sacred Heart has a, a Eucharistic adoration all day on Wednesday. We know about it, and it come, come, but do we come? And we're just a fan, we know about the Bible, we know... How about a friend? I know him personally, friend. But are we family? 
not just a fan or friend, a we family. In order to be family, you have to get inside Jesus culture, the Eucharistic culture. And this is what we need to do. We need to share and be so really proud and honored to share with others our Eucharistic culture. To everybody, it simply means, uh, I would like to thank with you, and I, my culture is a thankful culture. What do you mean, Eucharistic? Yes, it is Eucharistic culture, thankful culture, and we introduce people into this. And we will have the same God, really, from Him. And look at Him. And meditating on him all day long, all night long, you see what happened there. Just, the Eucharist culture is the culture of mercy, of humility. Right here, right now, you see God Almighty humbles himself to be what? This of bread. That is what unites us. Let us kneel and worship him.